Um, a lot of this is going to be future looking, um, but I think it's important to start to understand the concepts now so that when we have all of the tools available to us, um, we're able to kind of compose them in the ways that we want. Um, pieces of this are available now, but um, just want to be clear that this is probably more conceptual um, with a bit of a call to action at the end. So um, first, you know, why are we doing this? Well, labor markets, which is the primitive that underlies the metrics protocol, um, coordinates networks. And how does it do that? Those are, those are bad represented networks. Um, how do we get those bad represented networks? We'll do a demo. Um, I'll badge up all the X metric masters. Um, and then we can also kind of talk about the future um, where again, there's this call to action to organize networks around the metrics protocol. Um, so when I say that labor markets coordinates networks, these are you know kind of the actor groups we have. So we have sponsors, analysts, and reviewers. Um, sponsors are launching challenges inside of markets. They're supplying rewards to incentivize the analysts and reviewers. Analysts are submitting analytics to compete for challenge rewards, uh, and the reviewers score submissions. I mean, we're all pretty familiar with this if we're familiar with the bounty program. Uh, it's a simple you know coordination structure. Um, and we use uh, a stack right now that's built out mostly in Notion and Airtable. Um, Bounty Ops is using these tools to create the challenges. Analysts are uh, going to Notion to submit analytics, and then reviewers are using some extensions. So um, again, this should be mostly familiar at this point. Um, but in the future, uh, when we have the metrics protocol, the metrics app, um, and we use Badger alongside of it, these networks become more modular. Um, so here we can see that instead of just, you know, a team doing this, we're actually entering in a specific contract address and token ID. Um, the analysts here are gated based on their R metric balance and the reviewers, um, are a different contract address than the, uh, one who's launching the challenge. So swinging back to like that coordination structure, this is kind of the one that we see right now most of the time. Bounty Ops is sponsoring a challenge um, that kind of goes out to the like public market. We see a lot of our challenges going to, you know, just any analyst. Um, and then we have this X metric master group that acts as a reviewer. Uh, we could rearrange that. So we do run like flash bounties or elite challenges where um, maybe those are gated to X metric masters and then peer reviewed by X metric masters. Um, they can also, we can kind of switch out the puzzle pieces in here and kind of have this same coordination structure. So here you can see I renamed um, Bounty Ops to Bounty Bunch. That's a team that, you know, Brendan is running. Um, our analysts are still our Xmetric masters. And then here on, on the other side, you see here I have Pine Champion. So this is not a metrics down native network. Um, it's a network that Jack Guy has started and they do contests, they produce analytics. Um, but we can start to think about um, using this coordination structure and actually using different networks at different points in that coordination. Um, so how do we do that? We, we have to represent these networks on chain. Um, we use badges to do that. Um, these are the organizations or networks that have been launched with Badger. Um, so here you could see like, there's the metrics out bounty bunch, that organization that met, uh, Brendan is managing. Um, here's Pine Dow. Again, another organization that is uh, similar to us, that has connections to a lot of the metrics DAO uh, things in here. We can even zoom in to an individual like Marina, who is very active in our community on the metrics DAO team. Uh, we can see that she's also connected to Pine DAO. So the big thing here is that we can coordinate these, these networks in whatever order we want or put whichever network in that we want, uh, but we have to have those networks. And I see a hand. So yeah, what's up? Oh, that Marina, I was just you waving. That's you right there. All right. Um, so what's different about these on-chain networks? Like we have a lot of on-chain networks, right? Um, these are, you know, critically for our use case, they're interoperable with labor markets. Uh, it allows us to coordinate these different networks to produce different outcomes. Um, but there's really cool piece here that they have this characteristic of being middle out. Um, so these networks support what we like to call middle out management. Um, it's permissionless to create a network. Anyone could go to trybadger.com right now and create a network. 
it's transparent who's in that network. Um, anyone can see who's a part of which networks. And critically, these networks are prunable. So if you have a group um, that's doing some activity, there's an individual in that group that's acting malicious, um, they could be pruned from that network. Um, cool, so done with slides for now. I can answer questions if anyone has any, but I wanna kind of jump into a demo as well. So I'll pause for a second. Any questions on these first sections? Where can I see your uh, network display? Yes, uh, Marina posted a link in the chat here. Um, How about that? Yeah, That's that cool. network stuff was fun. I would, I would love to actually go through that on screen share sometime if people are interested. I'm still learning there, but it's cool. Thanks. All right, I'm going to jump into demo, but do feel free to drop stuff in chat or jump in. Um, basically, like right now, we have this X metric masters group in metrics DAO. Um, they're defined by having um, over 2,000 X metric tokens, which is a fungible non transferable token. Um, so here I have uh, my query, I've got all these addresses. On the right here, I'm on Badger, so I'll just um, log in here. And I'm going to create an organization. And uh, when you go through this process, you can basically just apply a name for your organization, a symbol. This will be the, the symbol of the token on chain. These are not um, editable, but the off-chain description, so in the application level, we can change them. I'm just going to put a space in here. It'll generate an image for us. Um, I am getting a MetaMask pop-up and signing that. I'm not sure if you guys are seeing that on the screen share. Um, looks like the network is busy. All right, so now we've created this organization. Um, I'm gonna swing back to this here. So. I am the organization creator. We now have an organization contract address. That's this address up here. Um, and if we want to define a role within this organization, we'll need to define kind of these different token IDs, and then we can start to issue them. So I'm going to call this Xmetric Masters. It's a demo of. Uh, Sending badges to Xmetric masters with more than 2K Xmetric. I could add attributes to this. I could upload a custom image. Right now, I'm just trying to keep things moving, so I'll go ahead and forward. Um, generally, this access tab I ignore, um, but there are a couple things in here. Uh, primarily on the front end, the feature right now is account bound. We want this to be yes, so that we can control who's in the network. If you wanted to make a network that was uh, made up of transferable tokens, you could switch that to no. So again, I'm getting a uh, MetaMask pop-up. Hello. What is in access claimable? What does that do? Yeah, that's a feature, Patrick, that's uh, developed at the primitive layer, but not been implemented at the app layer yet. Um, so I would suggest, like, as an operator using the tool, I wouldn't really play with that yet. Um, and unfortunately, I would, I would have to grab kind of Mason or Chance, one of the developers on here. Um, yes, Connor, account bound means you cannot sell transfer. Uh, users can always forfeit these badges. Um, so they're not like tattoos. They're more just like, uh, again, an issued badge where there's a manager that can control who has access. Um, so here I have my badge. I'm going to go ahead and update my holders. I'm going to upload the CSV of addresses that I downloaded. Um, I have never minted this many at a time, so we'll see how this goes.
And looks like Winthrop is going to give us a refresh here. Well, okay, let's see. So we see here we have 138 holders. We see some of them have logged in before, so their ENSs are logged here. Um, and here again, like if we swing back to this, we can see that um, like if I wanted to use the network that I just created, I could kind of insert these values into these um, inputs. Now, importantly, You know, as I mentioned, if someone's say like here um, by myself, if I wanted to, or if a manager wanted to kind of prune me from this one, um, it would switch to revoke. This individual is no longer a part of this network. Um, we get another transaction. And that will remove the badge from that user. Um, so if we take a look here, um, here we're kind of creating the organization, we're defining that badge, we're minting in bulk um, to the individuals that we've identified that we want to have in our network. And we should see that revoke pop up here as well. Um, and you'll notice that like, since we're using Polygon, all of this is very affordable. If you're an individual that, um, is in the initial labor market testing uh, kind of as a badge or as an operator of the labor markets uh, you should have received some matic that allows you to set up some networks uh, as well as try to test out the metrics dow uh, metrics application and protocol once those are live um, so again yeah we think about like the future of, of this network coordination is um, putting these these puzzle pieces in different orders so we could think about uh, Flipside pro ad team. Um, Connor and Jack are on a team at Flipside where they work very closely with the clients to understand what the clients need. Um, and then Connor and Jack may launch bounties. Uh, they could choose which bounties or which group they want to launch people to, who they want to review. Um, they would exist as a network, and these other groups would be networks as well. Um, so here, what can we do next? I'd say that the next thing that we're looking to as we understand these concepts and start to think about um, particularly the reviewer network that's available to us, um, if we go back to this page here, um, this reviewer network is really like who's determining what's getting scored in, in what way. So um, we do have kind of this general reviewer network right now with the Xmetric Masters, but I believe that there could be a wide variety of networks that perform this function. Uh, other networks that perform the function of sponsors because they're better at launching bounties. They know how to break projects up better than other groups do. Um, in, in the future, we could also imagine um, more modularity in terms of which analysts are able to enter into which challenges. Um, so I do have a forum post up. I'll drop it in the chat as well. I'd love to hear from um, the groups, like how reviewer networks should be defined. Um, if you're interested in kind of building out your own network, I'd, I'd love to work with you and help you uh, think through that. Uh, you can also, of course, feel free to go through on your own. I think Pine Dow is a really good example of this, a network that has spun up, um, starting to do things, and um, already, you know, making themselves available to other networks through this interoperability that they've uh, provided for themselves with Badger. I am going to pause again there and open up for questions. Patrick, I see if you created a badge already with claimable equals yes. Uh, yeah, so again, like the claimable piece, uh, it's not really uh, changing much as far as I'm aware on, on, on the usage right now, Patrick. It's, um, it's a feature that I don't fully understand, to be honest. There's these two in, in this section called signer and claimable. And they're discussed in the docs. I can jump over there if you want to take a look.
So I'll drop this your way, Patrick. But again, this is not something that I've really dug into because for my purposes, I've kind of just left them as uh, default there and then used a count bound. I'll also drop a link to the slides in the chat. and the forum post. Does this idea make sense of kind of like we have the same flow, but the networks that are performing the functions can change? Eric, I saw you come off mute. Do I sound like a crazy person? No, you sound great. I'm trying to I'm trying to formulate a question uh, so I don't sound like an idiot, but I'm just gonna go for it. Um, so for each of these three core pieces, once the metrics protocol is live and on chain, when I create uh, a you know one of the core challenges, is there? I guess you you alluded to that there's some kind of um, integration here where I could say like I want to only let Pine champions submit for this particular challenge. Like, well, that is that how it would work, or would would there have to be some behind the scenes tinkering to attach a badge? That's a good, really good question. So in the case that you described, it would be pretty smooth because Pine has already represented themselves with Badger. Um, if there was another group, um, uh, I think, you know, Lee has uh, some friends that he has a group with called Spire. They do Solana analytics. Um, I don't believe that network has been represented with Badger yet. So that would take tinkering in terms of that team setting themselves up. Um, Anyone can set these up. So the, again, the DAO could say like, hey, this is our reviewer network that we generally use. Um, they could have reasons for why people fall into that. Um, anyone else could also spin up their own network and say, hey, actually, we're a better reviewer network. You should use our network. This is why we do reviews like this. This is the scale we use. These are our credentials. Um, and then if they represent themselves, you kind of have these inputs. The cascading permissions in labor markets um, mean that this is set at the labor market level. This is basically establishing like a class. If you think about it in like object oriented programming, like this is the structure of how things will work. And then a challenge is an instantiation of that using money. So we would basically say this is a labor market where the bounty bunch launches things these analysts that have our metric balance between this range that are reviewed by Pine Champion. After that, anyone from the Bounty Bunch could come in, use money to launch a challenge where these people are able to participate. Very cool. Is it, um, is it sort of the idea that, uh, you know, the way Guild lets you somewhat arbitrarily assign roles to an NFT or token ownership or other, you know, broader arbitrary on-chain um, representations. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we can kind of see this if we look at um, Guild for, say, um, Metrics DAO or Pine DAO. Um, so in Metrics DAO, we use Guild to get access to Google Docs, um, mostly Discord channels. Um, so we have a couple different ways, like we have fungible tokens, Xmetric. We also have um, these badges. So all of these are, are badge networks, these NFT ones. Um, and nice. it's heavily inspired by that. Originally, I will say, like with the design of um, this setup, the the initial thinking was that 
there would only really be this R metric balance for analysts. Um, as we've talked more and learned more from Flipside, um, understood that there's definitely a desire to go kind of what we call direct to demographic. Um, so having the ability to have more modularity in terms of who's able to action on challenges is is something that we're exploring now as we've kind of uh, already done with the sponsor and the reviewer roles. Yeah, it's very cool. Like you could imagine some future iteration where you've got like nine different complex rules about who can submit, who can review, or even like, I don't know, your your point about, uh, I think you, it was in passing, but like if there are different approaches to how reviews are conducted, you could imagine like... Um, someone using like open AI to build an automated review system and putting that on chain somehow establishing a badge for it and then setting it up as the reviewer system for a certain kind of challenge or something. Anyway, you've got my, got my gears turning. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's exactly the right way to think about it, Eric. Like, Normally, when I think about these networks, I think about a network of people, but like the way these badges are set up, it could be an individual person, it could be a group of people, it could be a bot. Um, there's a lot of flexibility. Yeah, it's very neat. Who else, Connor? I see you mm -hmm. typing. Um, I realized that my... Uh question is less about badger functionality and more about um ability to submit to challenges which is more of an mdao question so i'm gonna save it for another period of time yeah i, I mean i'll like high level i'll say that in the the phased beta rollout like beta testing that we're doing with the uh, operators that we're working with um it's going to look like this it's simple um we've heard the feedback around needing more modularity here um, we're also working kind of on what Eric was alluding to, uh, this concept that we call N badge, which you could say, um, you could do a union of networks. So this person can submit if they're in this network or that network, you could say this person can submit if they're in this network and that network. Um, and we can kind of tier those, those rules out. So, um, it's, it's something we're definitely hearing, um, and looking to get integrated. Um, Ali, yes, I believe Patrick is recording this. Um, thank you, Patrick. And again, as I mentioned, a, a lot of these pieces with labor markets, they're a little bit, you know, futuristic. Um, we should get to get into that in the next couple of weeks with the operators we've identified. In the meantime, um, if you're excited about this, I really do ask that you think about like, what does a peer review network look like? Um, can you build your own peer review network that's better than the one that Metrics now has right now? Um, can you advise on how Metrics DAO should determine who falls in its reviewer network? Um, all of that aspect, the, the badging, the creating the network, the giving the network an identity and a way of working, that stuff is already all possible. I can't wait to see this uh, demoed with the app itself. It's uh, it's going to be cool to see it all come together.
Me too, for sure. For sure. Um, it sounds like we might not have any more questions. I'll hang for another five in case anyone uh, has something. But otherwise, I appreciate you guys coming in here. Happy to answer any questions in private as well. Um, but uh, again, these are just concepts I want to make sure that we're all thinking through as we have a new coordination system. Angela, ideal use cases. Um, I think, like, if you look through... I guess I'm thinking, like, what what is something that if maybe, like, a protocol or a person or something that might engage with this in the future that would make you really excited? Just, I want to, like, fantasize about what could happen in the future. Yeah, I mean, I think that what Eric was talking about, like, having an automated reviewer and, and using that thing badged would be very cool. Um, I think some things that are maybe more in the near term um, is just other examples or other uh, groups kind of following the example that Pine Dow is setting. Um, the reviewer network right now is managed kind of by the core team at Metrics Dow or the Bounty Ops team. I don't honestly love that long term. I think that there should be a lot of different sub networks that are all kind of vying for being the network that's chosen to be in included in a coordination chain. Um, so if you you know can imagine there's Pine Dow, maybe um, we have like a Dune Wizard group, a Cantina group, uh, other groups that are just friends that get a, getting together kind of similar again to Pine Dow or Spire. Um, that are then these networks that can either be used as the analyst network, the reviewer network, or the sponsor network. Um, that creates a situation where the core team no longer needs to support a uh, distinct generalized network, um, which kind of you know lets this organization decentralize further. The other thing that I think would be really cool, Angela, is. Um, I've used like Shroom DK and uh, like Python and some Web3 stuff plugins and worked with Mason to be able to like run queries and automatically mint badges. Um, if you take that a step further, you could be um, kind of running a job on some sort of automated basis, uh, viewing a user's transactions, and then badging or revoking badges based on those transactions. Um, that kind of keeps so a network cool. that's automated like up to date. That's cool. I haven't heard that one before. You got me. Yeah. You did it. That would be sweet. Like if I yeah. want to just have a network of like Uniswap users in the past three months or like who's used a DEX in the past 30 days, like I could kind of create that network. Ooh, the... what about what about an airdrop that doesn't happen all at once, but it happens over six months and you have to, you get like one sixth each month and you have to keep up certain qualifications in order to keep getting your monthly drops. Yes, definitely stuff like that. Um, cool. We think about that in metrics now too, like um, tournaments. Like, what if the win when you you know win a tournament round, you get a badge that allows you to ac access the next round of the tournament, and that kind of like takes a network and shrinks it over time to the winning group. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of design space here, um, and I'm excited to see what other people come up with. Thanks. No, thank you. I love that. All right, y'all, last call for questions. I'm going to call it here in about a minute. Um, All right. Well, okay. oh, go ahead. I was just asking where I could find these slides. I dropped them in the chat here, um, Jack. I'll reply and tag you on this. 
Um, Beck, I'm glad to see you. I don't know how long you've been in here, but I've been um, showing some love to Pine Dow. I just hopped in the end at the end, but I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, love definitely to talk to you more about this, and hopefully, um, you know, once Patrick has the recording, would love to to talk more to Pine Dow about it as well. But uh, definitely think that you guys are setting an example for um, how to be a new kind of puzzle piece in these coordination stacks. Yeah, I'm definitely down. All right, y'all, I'm going to call it here. It looks like Patrick uh, does have a question in the chat. Um, you know, if you spoke up in this and you feel comfortable with the recording being public, maybe give Patrick a thumbs up. Um, otherwise, I will see you all around the Discord. Feel free to tag me if you have any questions. And there is a little bit more active chatter around this in the reviewers channel, if that's a channel that you're in. Um, if you're not in there and you're interested in talking more about it, uh, feel free to tag me wherever. Thanks, guys.